bear with me. <laughs> ah, Kobe Jess. Uh -huh. Using Slack. Yeah. Why? 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 <laughs> Alright. Um, I wrote an article about this recently. Um, and Justin was pleading for someone to talk to this <laughs> talk to us. So I thought, well, I've already done most of the homework. I might as well just turn it into a few slides instead. Um, this is... Uh, I work for this company, uh, CXA Group. Um, I started there in September last year. In November we got to uh, a certain point where we decided to scrap our previous um, major project that was basically the company's one thing that we'd done um, and start afresh and that's pretty scary. To make it even more scary, uh, we decided to go for um, a framework that none of us had any experience in and we had to make a decision in about a week and a half because we had to start work on the project and we had a hard deadline. Um, what yeah. could possibly go wrong? Nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> so easy. So since it was so easy, we took our time to actually have a look and start comparing different JavaScript frameworks and try to get some rationale behind our decision process. Because what can often happen is, I, oh yeah, I've heard of this before, or let's just go with that and then you find out halfway through the project that it doesn't actually do what you want it to or you know the major developer has decided that they don't like it anymore <laughs> and you're left with nothing. Um, so we worked with frameworks that we had recommended to us at some point because we started asking around. Um, so <coughs> React was recommended. Uh, I mean everyone's heard of React but you know just because you've heard of it doesn't mean that it's good or right for you. The other one was Vue that we had recommended to us as well. And th these were personal recommendations, people that we knew that had been using them that said, yeah, this one's worth a shot. Further to that, we worked with frameworks that we'd heard of and had some idea of. So we'd been following the development cycle um, and had some concept that they existed in the first place. It wasn't just jump onto Google and you know, send me front-end frameworks. Good luck. Um, so that gave us Angular 2 and um, Aurelia. As you can tell with the Aurelia logo, that <laughs> nothing. Um, we set criteria down, the things that we absolutely had to have as part of any given framework. The first one we looked at was flexibility. And flexibility for us was a framework that would let us chop and change things should we need to. So we're looking on an enterprise level. CXA looks at 12 different countries that we deploy to. Um, some of those are low bandwidth and low tech. So we need something that's lightweight and it's going to work there. But the flexibility would mean that if our state, uh, state management uh, grew stale, we'd be able to drop something else in without too much pain. And of the list that we had, um, we ended up with this. Um, Aurelia and Vue were our favourites out of this because they were really easy to set up. You could get going without having to think too much. They're fairly new frameworks, so they've really learnt from Angular and React. Um, they have that flexibility. Vue and React in particular, they don't really do that much on their own. And this is one of the things that's like coming to React, um, having not really played with it much before. I expected like I can just install React and away I go, except you can't. You have to get all the bits together. Um, and the developers of Vue and Aurelia know this and they give you some head starts. There are some nice uh, starter, like, um, what are they called, boilerplates for React. And there are fairly standard ones that you can choose as well to get you going. Um, but they, as always, they make decisions for you, so you need to be careful about what you're doing. So for this, we gave wins to Aurelia and Vue. Um, because they, they asked questions, they made decisions, but it was easy enough to alter it if we went along. Partial credit to React because, uh, yeah, there are nice boilerplates out there, but again, you know, you can chop and change as you go. It's not a big deal. You're not signing your life away. Um, complete fail to Angular 2 because it's quite monolithic. Um, you buy into the ecosystem and everything works within that ecosystem. And this is great if that's what you want to go for. It was just not for us. And this is, it's really hard to quantify exactly why we wanted to go down this, this road. 
Um, because if you're buying into Angular 2, you've got support there. So if that's all right with you, that's good. But if there's a feature that's not within that particular, um, like that, that function doesn't do exactly what you want it to do, you're stuck with it. And personally, I don't like that. And within the group of developers that we had, we didn't like that. So this is why we've ended up with a result for this. Don't feel bad if you're using Angular. I mean, no. <laughs> Offline support was really critical for us. Um, not many people really seem to know about the offline APIs these days. On a really basic level, you can detect that someone's lost a connection. And that's quite critical for us because we're going to be deploying in countries like the Philippines and Indonesia where a mobile connection is not given. Um, so you can be sitting there doing something, your mobile connection drops or internet or whatever you've got, um, and suddenly your app fails. That, that's not great. Being able to work offline and keep going even though that's happening uh, is really important, especially given those countries. If you're only going to Singapore, maybe it's not a big deal. Um, there is an offline first movement um, about actually making your applications work primarily without internet connection, and there are big advantages to doing this. For our purposes, it's mostly due to the fact that we're looking at um, like limited connectivity countries, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, so it's really important for us to maintain a good experience for our users and not have everything die, especially when you're in a single page application framework. So they're very sensitive. If you've got an Angular 1 uh, install, I can break it for you in seconds, and I've made many developers cry um, by putting a, a hash somewhere in the URL. Everything falls to bits. Um, so they, they are still sensitive. They're not as bad as that anymore, most of them, but you've got to be careful. Conclusion was good. Every single framework has some way of supporting service workers and web workers. Um, React and Vue have, frame, have uh, plugins for it, so you don't need to think about it. Um, Angular has the next one, I think it's coming in pretty soon, Angular 2. Uh, Aurelia's got theirs that they're, they're writing. So as far as we were concerned, it wasn't something we needed immediately. Every framework covered it for us. We were good. I kind of touched on performance, especially as we're going into places. I mean. Even here in Singapore, if I need to download 7 meg to look at Singtel, anyone work with Singtel? Um, <laughs> then there's something wrong with your site. Um, it doesn't matter what you're doing. The more that you start with before you um, start getting into... I mean, we know the things that are bad, like images take up a lot of space, potentially. Uh, your CSS, I hope, is not that big, uh, but it happens. Um, the biggest problem these days seems to be JavaScript, where Singtel. <coughs> um, but you know, you get six meg of JavaScript to do what? I mean, if one of us tried to, even collectively, if we tried to churn out six meg of JavaScript here, we'd have a long, like, long, long wait before we could write that much code. And what are you doing with it? Well, they didn't write it. Oh, they didn't. That's the thing. They've grabbed others. The, the, the key. Yeah, that's, that's the whole point. The key is to start low, though, because you will add plugins. You'll keep adding new things. It's so easy to say, hey, we need a date picker. Google, you know, date picker for my library. Done. <laughs> I don't need to write any code anymore. The thing could be a meg for all you know, but who cares because it's fast on my machine. Um, <laughs> even when you pay attention and you are a good developer and you care about what you choose with your plugins, you still need to start low. Um, I'm going to look at my numbers here to find out. Here's our results anyway. Um, Vue in particular, it's almost like it wins above the other wins uh, because it's down to about 23k for the base libraries. You can get a functional Vue application in 23k. That's less than jQuery. That is magnificent. Um, React is uh, probably about double that. Or really, uh, th these are based on, it's really hard to get a, a basic measure of what these things are, so I, I did my best at the time. Um, Aurelia was into about 60k. They're within a shout of each other. None of these things are going to break your uh, device. Um, Angular 2 was about 600k. Just to render a hello world, basically. That, that's not good. In practical usage, you're not going to launch a 23k Vue.js app. There will be a lot more to it. It'll be a few hundred k at least. But you can't reduce Angular 2 down to that. There's nothing you can do to it because that's your base level. It's only going to get worse. As projects get older and as they get maintained, it never gets any better. 
because you never get the uh, the goal of suddenly like, improving the performance. They just want a new feature instead. Um, so you need to choose that. That's why it's so critical for us to make sure that was the case at the start. So Vue is better than the others in this, but the others were good enough that it didn't really matter. And unfortunately, Angular 2 just didn't make the cut. Next, server rendering. Um, now, the early uh, round of uh, <coughs> single page applications, if you don't have JavaScript happening, then nothing happens. Um, and you might be saying, well, is that any different? But the difference is in making sure that something's actually rendered as soon as possible. With server rendering, you can get the server to render the first hit of the page, or even every single page, and render, for example, a static site out of uh, SPA architecture. Um, and there are good reasons that you might want to do that. For our interests, what we're looking at is the first load. We have a closed application, so that means a login screen. To get, the, um, get that rendered on someone's phone as fast as possible, I say phone because most of our users out there are going to be primarily mobile only, um, you want that server rendered. You don't want to have to load all the JavaScript libraries just to see a login screen. Um, so it's absolutely critical for us that this is there, otherwise our performance is going to be subpar. Now, React and Vue, there are plugins. And there's a recurrent theme you'll see here. This is why we like the flexibility early on. You can just find a plugin for it, it'll take care of it for you. Um, Aurelia is in progress. Angular 2 has a really nice way of doing this, but it's in progress. So they'll get there eventually, but you know, at least they're going there. Um, so that was pretty good. <coughs> Maturity was the key one. Um, the company I work for is a startup. We've just passed our 100 million US valuation. Um, here I am telling you about how our main product that every single client of ours uses <coughs> came into existence. If we stuff this up, then the company goes. It's not just a small thing that's on the line. Maturity for us is making sure that whatever we chose, it would be around for the next three years or so. Because <coughs> generally speaking, if you've got an application that lasts three years without a major tech change, you're doing OK. It's a major investment. We've got a lot of developers working full time on this. There's a lot of money invested. Um, we don't want to make mistakes with that. The winner is interesting out of this in different ways. The first thing we looked at was how long the library's been around, and React, that's e easy. The first 1.0-ish release, when the, the Facebook developers said, you can actually deploy this to production now, was in 2013. Um, the other three were late last year. And you'll say, like, I've heard about Aurelia for ages now. Vue I've heard about for a long time. Angular 2's been in development forever, hasn't it? It hit live September last year. We started work on this in November. There was no way we were going to drop something and be in production, like, you know, ready to go live in, for two months um, on our company. It's not all of that. You still need to think about the development cycles, and that's something that did turn us away from uh, Angular 2 as well. If you've worked on Angular 1 and watched what was happening with Angular 2, it was not great. Um, in essence, Angular 1 to 2 is a complete rewrite. You can't just change the library version and go with it. You have to really think about what's going on, and that was terrible. Um, Angular is now up to Angular 4, because they said it took us so long to get to 2 that let's just go versions everywhere. <laughs> Everyone can have a version. As I'm speaking, it's probably up to 5 or 6. <laughs> um, Vue's been around for a while. There was a 1.0 that was on the, uh, I think it was 2015 that first came out. Um, but there was a pretty fundamental change in the way that the library was put together. So when it got to version 2, which was, I can't remember the exact date, it was about August last year, I think. Um, all three of these were late last year, basically. Um, it reached a real level of maturity to the library. And if you've been following where these have been going in terms of popularity, Vue is on the up. And the reason for that is because of the work that went into it. So yes, it did only go live late last year for production. But the development uh, cycle has been very solid with a lot of um, like good responses. If you look into GitHub and you have a look at the number of issues that are raised for it, it's looking pretty healthy. Um, so Vue's all right, even though it's still on our fail list. Um, Aurelia, pretty much the same. They had a very long development cycle. It was very open. 
so you could start playing with it for a while. And this is why people get confused when we say, so how has it only reached production ready just recently? It's because that development cycle has been very good. Angular 2 burnt everyone along the way because they changed tack halfway through development. Um, if you're a .NET developer and you've been playing, paying attention to .NET Core, Microsoft did exactly the same thing along the way with that, um, which makes me glad that I'm now working on React and not .NET that I was for a long time. Um, <coughs> so that's the basic level of uh, support. The other thing beyond that is community, making sure that if I ask a question on Stack Overflow because I've given up on life, um, that there will be other people out there who do that. This can be hard to gauge, but you usually see metrics on uh, the number of projects that are in GitHub that feature a certain uh, library, for example. Um, so Vue is rising, React is very solid. Angular 2, I don't know, um, really is kind of okay. Um, but for us, it just they weren't enough. React basically won again because it's been around for long enough that everyone else out there more or less has run into the problems that we might. Um, and that helped immensely. The last one and the absolute sealer on the deal was, as I mentioned at the start, not one of us had any experience coding in any of these other than playing around with them in demos. Um, we needed to hire people fast. We had three months to rebuild the major application. Um, we probably needed six to do it. I had to hire people really fast. We didn't want to get to the end of it and have to refactor all the code we wrote because we suddenly learned how to write it like, just before it was due. Um, so we actually did an experiment on this. We narrowed it down. We, we wrote off Angular 2 at this stage because it clearly wasn't going to be a fit for us. Um, so we put out job ads and we basically went to hire on equal terms that everything was the same except we said Vue or Aurelia or React to see what we'd get. Um, we had zero, zero, several, and I hired some great developers out of it. I looked further to see if anyone else was hiring along those lines to see if there was something. <coughs> zero, zero, many. Um, it was a bit disappointing to reach this stage. We kind of wanted a bit more of a contest because Vue is really nice. Uh, Aurelia is really nice. Angular 2 has got its strengths. Um, but in the end, because of the position that we're in, it was just a hands down that React was the way that we wanted to go. I wanted to have a choice. I really wanted to say, well, I really like this library a bit more. Um, On to a few other things. Uh, dev tools and testing. If you don't have browser dev tools and you know, you know, uh, you know um, single page application architecture, everything's happening in the browser and you can't analyze it. You can't develop that very well. Um, I found out when I was uh, trying to debug IE11 recently, and there's no dev tool for any of these in IE11. It's, it's not easy. Uh, you have to basically search line by line through the code as, you know, this is in debug mode, so there's every bit of code that's in there. It was, it was not fun. Um, testing, every single library supports these, so yeah, there wasn't really much of a thought about it. Some have better testing methods than others. Um, I admit that I'm not that great at understanding how unit testing works as much as I should because I'm just not a very good developer, maybe. Um, and I know that, especially for Aurelia, apparently the testing tools are really strong. Like the integrated testing is really good. Um, but from my own limited understanding, they are all on the same level. I've been schooled by a couple of the um, like developers of these frameworks since I published my article. So. Um, yeah, it's been quite useful to learn that we were kind of on the same, on the right track. Hands-on was really important. Once we, this is we, something we did at the same time we put the job ads out, because we had to move fast. We couldn't just sit there and say, well, you know, leave the job ads up for a couple of weeks, because we didn't have a couple of weeks. So we gave ourselves, um, two of us picked the framework. One went with React, one went with Aurelia. Yeah. And we gave ourselves a goal of building a login screen to our current system. So we had the API set up. We had to do authentication. We needed to render the screen and get a basic project set up. Um, we were surprised by this in that they both, like all of these libraries more or less are using the same uh, ES6 level JavaScript, even if it's getting into TypeScript or something like that. They're so similar that development was pretty much the same. There are differences. 
Um, React with its JSX has the HTML um, thrown in there with the JavaScript, and other libraries don't do that. But in terms of the development experience, it was pretty much the same for us within the demo cycle. Setting up is obviously much harder in React than... Actually, I've got the Angular one, but that should be Aurelia. I've stuffed that up. Um, <coughs> so that's... No, you did not win. Uh, <laughs> Aurelia did all right. Um, it's the wrong time to find out I've made a mistake there. But it really didn't make a difference for us. And that, that kind of helped us when we're looking at the hiring thing being so important in the decision. So the final result, I, every time I do a talk somewhere, I have to have a cat picture. So here's a cat. It's like, this, this is your drum roll, even though I kind of told you that React won. Um, you'll be sitting here and you'll say, like, we're using Angular 2, we're using Vue or Aurelia, and like, this is my library. And that's good. The difference for us is we had our constraints. The key ones is we're enterprise. We have to be able to sell this thing to 12 countries. We need to sell the company in a state that someone will come along and offer us a billion dollars and not be frightened because the framework we've built it in doesn't exist anymore. Um, so our, our decisions are a little bit more cautious than something else that you might make for your own projects. If I was going um, to something that I wrote for myself, then it would be a completely different result. Well, maybe. Maybe I'd go with React anyway, since I now know how it works. Um, but certainly for us, React was the hands-down winner. <coughs> I mentioned that I've written about this, and so this is the problem with shortened URLs. Is that, that's probably harder to write than just Googling the thing. Um, if you jump onto site point, then you can read everything that we went through. Um, hopefully in a more coherent way than the way I've been speaking about it tonight. Uh, so please do so. Otherwise, you can ping me on Twitter. I will pop the slides with the corrected bit that doesn't show Angular on the slide. Show. <laughs> Thank you. Hey Chris, thank you. Uh, good talk. Um, you talked about three uh, pretty important tactics that you used. One was to check out the like status of the projects on GitHub. Another was to build a test project. A third was to set up uh, like a. Like, oh, well, they were real. Like, if we had yeah. any talent, we would have interviewed them. Yeah. Yeah. And to, to <laughs> get jobs. What are some other, um, or maybe can you go into more depth on the like specific things that you did to look at? Um, specifically, like, do I really want to work with this framework for a long time? Um. <coughs> Um, or that's, or that's those kind are of the three, which, are, which is the stuff. most important ones to you. Yeah, and the maturity was probably that, that it had to have that support. Um, and it's like I said, we needed this thing to survive for three years. Um, and it, it's, even though we tried to be as scientific as possible, it gets very non-scientific when you get down to that kind of thing. Um, I think ultimately, like, even if we had a framework we didn't like as much and we were able to hire on it, we might have gone with that because we had to hire fast. I've hired, I think, seven people in a, like six months. Um, and we needed that maturity. And I, as I've found out, the people that we've hired have come in and said, like, you don't know what you're doing. Here's how you do it properly. And we had to do that really quickly. Um, so that, that was probably the one thing, if there is one thing, that made the difference for us. Um, my question is similar on the sense that <coughs> What if I, three years down the road, all of them grow more mature? Hopefully, yep. the maturity question is no longer in play. Which will you choose? Because the maturity was the very dominant decision maker, apparently. Yeah. Um, <coughs> ask me in three years. Because then we'll be doing... I mean, our requirements might have shifted. Three years from now, hopefully offline is something that's just native. There might be performance issues because... Um, uh, this is one of the things, React is a bit of a dinosaur compared to these other ones. So being an old project isn't always good. But then React Fiber is new and coming out in the next version of React. And that changes things again. So making sure that library is in some way up to date and not a dinosaur is really important. Um, and that, that's a big risk. Like you, you do risk when you're going for something that's been around for a while that it's just going to stay where it is. Uh, and it's very fortunate, I think, with React that uh, Facebook aren't happy just to sit with it. They're pushing it forward. 
Uh, one of the key things on maturity that I didn't mention here is, um, I don't think I mentioned it in my article either, um, looking at where a framework is used. Because you, you look on the side and it's like, where are you used by PayPal? Where are you used by this and that? Um, who's writing it and why are they actually writing it? One of the things that really irks me with Angular is it's being written by Google. It's using TypeScript because Microsoft threw a ton of cash at them. And Google, do Google use it for Gmail? No. Do so they use it for Maps? No. Is it on the pipeline for those? No. Do they use it for Search? No. What are Google writing it for? They've got a long list of all these apps of theirs that they use it, but the chances of using them is slim. Google Analytics? No. So what are Google actually investing in this for? And honestly, I don't know. React, on the other hand, is the basis of Facebook. Facebook as it is would not exist without, without React. And Facebook write it for themselves. The fact anyone else uses it is just nice for them. Mm. Others, like Vue, it's a community-driven project. There's no major sponsor behind it. So the success or failure is always going to be, be a bit more um, interesting. Um, the really the same thing, it's a community-driven thing. I think it's one of the old React developers, uh, sorry, um, <coughs> Angular developers, so I may correct me, who yeah. wanted to shift out and do something else. Um, so it's got a nice heritage in there, but at the same time it's running off community, which is fine because without community we wouldn't be using what we are. Um, but at the same time, it's yeah, you've got, you've got to think a bit deeper about like, where the money is coming from, basically, and what the interest is. So if Angular 2 fails for Google, what does it mean for the company? You know, it's not much. If Re uh, React fails for Facebook, the company's gone. There's a big difference there. I think it was first. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Fiverr. Doesn't that scale a little bit? That. Uh, uh, Facebook is basically rewriting the whole thing because that failed for Google. Google went from one to two, yeah. As in terms of that, and how it sounds a little scary. Yeah. Well, the, the thing that Facebook have done right is they announced Fiverr a year ago. Um, this a couple of my colleagues have shared an article on TechCrunch, which is like it's from today. That Facebook have announced Fiverr to the world. No, they haven't. It's been around for a year. Every single time um, Facebook have had any developer, anything, they've been flogging it and trying to make sure people understand what's going on. So when we dived into React, one of the things I find annoying as a HTML purist is you have to wrap so many things in divs or something like that. It's just really odd. Um, Fiber fixes that. Like, I'm sold right there. Um, but they've explained their process clearly. The documentation is already there they've followed the same path and they haven't veered from it because they've just felt like it or because suddenly they've, they've hit, like they've gone off the wrong track. I mean, that's Angular 2 where it's been derailed. They had a great idea of where to put the framework, but it just didn't work. And what they've done is instead just leave Angular 1 behind. Um, so Fiverr doesn't seem to be going that way. And Facebook have been through this themselves internally. So they know the pain, they know what it's like to have to transition from um, React 15, 5 to 16. Um, so they will have learned a lot of lessons for us, hopefully. Um, does it scare us? No, because if you're in this industry, you need to be able to adapt to change anyway. It's part of it. Now, if you're still using jQuery 1, then your site's probably been hacked 20 times by now. Um, and there are plenty of sites that still do, because no one ever updates anything. Yeah, other question out of curiosity, what do you use for state management? Uh, Redux. Redux. Yeah. Don't ask me too many questions about it because I'm an engineering manager and I don't do that much code <coughs> at the moment. Redux <laughs> is cool. Yeah. So my question is related to the previous one. Uh, can you tell us what you used before and why there were, were there any showstoppers to say like no more, we can't use this, um, move on? We wanted to go for a single page. Um, architecture. Um, my experience, I mean, I've been a developer for over 20 years, so I've used a lot of different things. I've got a lot of .NET experience, like ASP.NET Classic, um, uh, most recently like Razor. Uh, I played around with .NET Core, which is Razor again. Uh, that's pretty much my entire front-end career like that, and trying to make it like, render the HTML properly, please. Um, but it's all... Uh, um, is that static, like server-driven architecture? Yeah, that's my entire history. So that's what, you, what the, the product used before? Uh, oh, what our CXAs? Ah, oh, right. <laughs> Not you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Dirty laundry time. 
um, there are two existing uh, architectures in place in a country company that's been around for three years. Um, so you know things have gone wrong along the way. Uh, the first one uses .NET backend and it has an XSL or XML driven uh, HTML generated front end. I've never seen anything like it before. So you'd have to write that off as a completely custom framework. I've done a lot of work in XML and XSL. I've never seen anyone rendering uh, an application in HTML doing it that way. <coughs> it's bizarre. They were quite popular for a while. But to render your front end like using .NET, like, just, yeah, it's ugly. The rewrite version that never gained enough traction and failed um, was using... Um, and on, the cli on the client side? Yeah, client side. Um, it was using an SPA architecture, but one of the old ones. Um, and I can't remember right now what it was. But it was basically, and that, that was our other benchmark looking at this old architecture, it stagnated. That's always the risk with any um, library. The developers on that project have moved on to others. Um, and there were not going to be any new features on it. It did pretty well in our assessment, because I did include it, even though I haven't included it here. Um, but it just, like, there was no so real future. So you to change the server technology as well? Our server technology is the same. So we're API, um, like .NET API driven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't want to change everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So next. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I'm front end. So, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? So I've got one question. Yeah. Um, you did not consider Amber, Amber Jess. No. No, not at all. <laughs> it just we had a really short time to look at it uh, it wasn't on the radar none of us had been paying attention to the project that much um, yeah um, I, I met the guy who's responsible for Meteor JS um, and he was recommending Vue uh, oh, okay. and but having like talking to the framework authors and finding out what they think is really different to talking to other developers so I was really lucky to be able to ask him and get some ideas from that and, and I was Conversations like that that led us in this direction, um, and not everyone's going to like know the person who wrote Meteor mm. or whatever else like that, or be able to talk to them so easily. Mind you, tweet these people, and they'll tell you. And you should be pretty honest about what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.